Hello people, um, today I'm going to show you how I do my post-processing. Every 3D image I make, I always bring into Photoshop afterwards to give it a little bit of a um, uh, post-production touch, a bit of a look. I said I would show you the, this in a previous tutorial, so here it is. So I made this image recently, bring it into Photoshop, I've created an action called every days in the folder and I just go play I merge the layers the next action I press play and I'm done so I go from that to that and that's literally the you know the 10 seconds it takes me to do the post production of any image I make in 3D uh, quick and easy. So what I'll do is I'll show you through that process of making those actions. I am using an image size of 1200 by 1200, uh, 1200 pixels by 1200 square at 72 dpi. If uh, your images are much smaller or much larger when bringing them in, you may have to adjust or tweak these settings to match your dimensions of your canvas. So what I would like to do is take you through exactly how I create my actions for my everyday artworks. Uh, and so you can create your own based on this and it's really fast and easy to repeat uh, whenever you finish a 3D image and you need to just give it that five to 10% extra polish or a look which uh, you're happy with. So if I scroll down into these actions we can see that they're made up of several different uh, actions procedures that we've taken in Photoshop. So what I will do is I'll take you through each of these, I'll recreate it um, and in that way you'll see what goes into it, you can do it for yourself and then adjust it to see how you would like to do it. So I'll leave that open. First of all, let's make a new folder. Let me cancel that for a second. Select this up here for actions. If that, if you don't have this here, go to window and select actions from there. And then this window will pop out. Select the folder down here. I'm just going to call it everyday tutorial select this icon here which is create new action um, and I'll call it I'll, just the same as what I've called it up here auto adjust so that's started the recording feature now so everything I do from here on in within Photoshop is going to be recorded so I'm going to drag my background layer into this um, create new layer icon so that's duplicated it now I'm going to come across to image and then underneath adjustments we have all these automatic adjustments I'm just going to apply all those so auto tone image auto contrast image auto color uh, and then I'm going to make sure my layer is selected and I'm going to press 5 and that's going or I can manually come up here to opacity and change it to 50% and that's it so let me press stop so that is my auto adjust layer and what that does for me is create a whole new layer above my original that I can toggle on and off to see the effect if I press 0 it will give me 100% opacity I'm not recording any of this now because I've pressed stop. It would give me 100% opacity. So from my original, I could say, I could look at that. It gives me a um, automatic Photoshop adjustment across the board. And I might say that is a lot more to my liking. That's what I was hoping for coming out of 3D. Or I might say, actually, I liked you know, this more monochrome uh, haze look across it maybe I'll split the difference and go halfway so I usually have it set to 50% so I can just 
get a different perspective on the work I've has just come out of 3D and decide, you know, where I want that opacity to be. So I'm just going to keep it at 50% for now. The reason I separate these is uh, this is a natural stage where I can get some auto adjustments. I can decide whether I like the direction of this look and feel. Um, and then from here, I'm going to merge this into one and then I do another whole set of adjustments. Uh, breaking it up this way lets me make some tweaks before I move on. So now I'll move on to the next section. And before I carry on with my next set of adjustments, I need to uh, merge my layers. So, so make sure your new layer you selected, you created was is selected. Hold down shift, select the background, control E will merge, option E on, or command E on a Mac. And then we can start the next set of uh, actions. I'll make sure I'm still in my everyday uh, folder. Create a new action. Adjustments, I'm going to call it. Record. So, filter, lens correction is what I use. I come across to custom and I drag the fixed red cyan fringe to minus 100 and I do the same to the blue yellow fringe. Hit OK on that. Next filter I'm going to add is the noise. Add noise. Really subtle. It's going to be 1% uniform monochromatic. Then I'm going to add some adjustment layers. So come down to layers palette, select curves, and then I'm going to change these points a little bit. So um, so this, I'll give a little bit of explanation. This point here is the is the blacks and then the whites you can see here. This is sort of the histogram of the the quantity of the values. So we see we've got a spike in the white in this cross here. It's represented here. And this on on the left hand column goes from black to white. So if I drag this up, anything that is black in the scene will get lighter, turn to white. So what I like to do is, you know, it might be called a bit of a vintage look, but a, or a faded look. I like to drag up those, those blacks to about 10 or 12, see in the output here, it's giving you a, a level. I'll give you some values. But I usually just drag it up to something like that, about 10. Then I put another point in, and I put this at about somewhere there, just to um, equal out these values in between, so they're not they're not adjusted up too much. Um, so let's say, you know, that's pretty decent, but let's say some values of, let me just drag it, 27, 27, or maybe somewhere there, 24, 26, say. Input 24, output 26. Then I'll put another point in here, and about, say, um, Out there. Now, my way, my 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 pen has just dragged it a little bit further. But what I've created, you, you've got your linear line. You'll see a dark line behind the whole thing, and I've just created a very subtle S curve. Um, you know, it's slightly above the line here, bringing those highlight those lighter areas up a bit, and those darker areas down a bit with the, these middle points. And with this one here, I'm just going to drag it over to about two, four, six or seven around there. 
and that's all I do with the curves. Uh, once again, subtle, but it, it'll have a, an effect when we see later on. Um, I then want to add a color. So, so select um, the adjustments again. I'm going to ch change the color balance. I'm going to leave the midtones. I'm going to change the shadows to minus four in the in the cyan and red, and plus four in the yellow and blue. And then I'm going to go to highlights and and bump up the red. Change that to eight. I think that's it. Let's go back. Um, stop that. And that's and that's it. So we have gone from an initial image that looks like that to a final image that looks like that. There to there. So it's quite a decent um, change. And from just the second section from where we merged, we went from that to that. And so now I've got my um, layers. They seem a bit messy and I've got more than I probably want. So then I just go through and I, I try and clean that up. So I'm happy with this lens correction. So it makes an adjustment layer, sets the adjustment layer to curves. And then I can see because I played with the points a fair bit, it's uh, selected all those points each time and created a new action. Okay, so this one's my color balance. So this is the final points that I created. Uh, let's see, 10, 10, 10. Yeah, so I think the last one is the one I want to keep. So it means I can delete all the previous ones because that was just me playing around and showing you those adjustments but the last one has all the values let me just check 214, two fours. yeah the last point so I delete those and I just keep that last one and then probably the same has happened with my color balance yeah it's created two separate um, color balances so I want to just double click on that one. Oh, it's got it there. So let me just delete this last one. I'll delete it there as well. Um, let me delete that layer. Okay, so if I start again, I double click this one, it will just execute this action. And I say, okay, create that. And I okay that. So that's created a straight color balance with no values. You've got, it's all zeroed out, you can see. And then I'll double click this on how I adjust that color balance. It's got the minus four and the plus four. It's missing the eight, which I'll then OK. And then you see it's added that in. And it's back to what we've got. And uh, let me just check. Uh, got the same. OK, there's one extra in there, but it's basically the same. Uh, OK, I've just Right, I've just condensed uh, a couple of these things down into, you know, one less action there, but yeah, here we go. Um, make adjustment layer, set adjustment layer. So I probably don't need that one. I don't need set current adjust adjustment layer, so I'll delete that one. Because I'm setting it here. Make adjustment layer, set adjustment layer, make adjustment layer, set adjustment layer. So, happy with that. 
and then you have your set of actions you can repeat very quickly with every image you have. So let me bring up a couple of other images. Here's another image I made recently. I'm just going to look in the history, nothing's applied to it. So I'm going to auto adjust, play, merge those together, adjustments, play, and I'm, and I'm done. So initial image, finished image. I'll do that with one more. And this one came out of 3D and was I like the really washed out look for it and the foggy mist. But once again you can see once I run it through my process it just evens out the values and it looks, you know, even more like a, a dusk daylight um and I can bump up those values, but I'll keep them at that I'll merge adjustments play through all those again and then once I've played through that if I still want to add something else like a new levels I can do that and adjust my levels and then I might call that my finished image playing with the opacity up and down once again, we went from initial image to final image. So I hope that helps some of you out, um, setting up some actions that you can repeat really quickly. And you know, I look forward to seeing what you guys make with it. Um, you can keep up to date with my stuff on Instagram at mankind or uh, just here on YouTube. Thanks guys, see you later.